Hi guys, it's Chris at Court and Crown, still in my bedroom, still drinking cider. And what have we got today? Well, we've got a cider, not a perry today. Got a few perries lately. And it's a cider that turned up this morning in a box with three other ciders. And I hadn't ordered them. They were sent to me very kindly by David at Bushel and Peck in Gloucestershire. Uh, so I thought, let's try one. I want to try one straight away. I was very excited. And here was the first one that we're going to try. As you can see, it's Dabonet, so single variety. We've had a few single varieties lately, Dabonet and Kingston Black, I feel, which is great. It's great. I mean, they're the two most common single variety cider apples you'll see around. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not odd there's that many, but I just feel like I've tried more lately than we've tried in the last year or whatever it is. So what do we know about this? Wild fermented, bottle conditioned. It's pet nat. I do know that about it. It is a 7.5% ABV. So David actually doesn't have any orchards of his own. He collects all the apples locally that would go to waste in people's gardens and so forth around Gloucestershire and sort of the local environs if you like uh, one of his stipulations is the apples have to be in good condition and they, they mustn't have been sprayed they mustn't have been sprayed with anything so that's all kind of cool in it so we should, we're assuming the quality of apples he's getting is very good and also he's stopping apples go to waste which is a great thing to do we tried a dabner from him recently in fact it was 500 mil a uh, slightly different format to this I don't think it was pet nat etc yeah, it's a different sort of thing. Don't think it was well fermented either. But what does it say? Exuberant and full-bodied as befits a cider made from these delightful cider apples with robust tannins. Uh, bottle number 41, so obviously limited edition. This is from 2019. Yeah, all good stuff. Something else we've had a bit of lately, and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep it up, baby. Cheese. I've got some more cheese. Look at that little thing there. So that sort of pinkish rind on this. So that tells us something about this cheese, doesn't it? Yes, Chris, it does. What is it? I'll tell you what it is. This is a washed rind cheese. So washed rind. So you wash the rind of the cheese while it's maturing. And that helps inhibit the growth of certain moulds and encourage, encourage the, the growth of certain bacteria, actually, primarily. And that's what gives this pink tinge. The most famous of these bacteria is Brevibacterium linens, or B linens for short. And basically, when everyone was ever talking about... Um, Wash rind cheeses previously, they just say it's bee linens. But actually, it turns out with research, there's actually quite a lot of different things going on here. Bee linens is not the whole story by any stretch of the imagination. There's all sorts of things. And actually, the white bloom you might be able to see on this, I believe that's one that's local to this farm. We were talking about terroir recently, about how a rum can have terroir, if you like, because the microbial colony in there. Well, they have a bacteria, uh, Microbacterium gubidensi, I think it's called. Just got a tweet there. Uh, Gubidensi, I think it's called. So it's named after their farm because it's the only place that's been isolated and it's on their cheese. So there you go. There's terroir for you. This is a beautiful fat pudgy one as well. It's got a real nice bit of breakdown under the rind, some acidity in the middle where it's still young. Gorgeous looking thing. And it's got funk as well because that's one thing that you can that helps you spot a washed rind. Funky rinds, sort of like, you know, sweaty feet kind of smell if you like. So yeah, the most pungent cheeses tend to be washed rinds and that is no exception. Although on washed rind scales, that is certainly on the milder end, but I like it very much. And I haven't had it for ages. Made by the Ferguson family in County Cork. Don't know if it's going to go with the cider, but it's quite a subtle cheese. It's actually just come out of the fridge. It's a bit of a shame. It should be warmer. It should be warmer. I like the cider, it shouldn't be too, too cold. Neither should the cheese. It doesn't need to be even a fridge temperature. It masks flavour, does the cold. But never mind. Never mind. Also, they get softer and more pliable as they warm up. Yeah, they're better. Anyway, I'm sure we'll get something from it. How bad a time can I be having? Shall we open this? Yes, please, Chris, get on with it. Okay. So thank you, David, for sending me this. Thank you so much. Very, very generous. And I cannot wait to try it. I must say, genuinely, genuinely. There's some bubbles coming up. Probably going to be quite light sparkle because it's pet nap. But it depends when you bottle it. You bottle it before, you know, before um, a lot of the sugars turn to alcohol and get real fizzy ones if you want. So then you have that gorgeous colour again. Nice colour. The Kings of Black, the Dabonet, bring in the colour every time at the moment. Nice haze. Looks a lot like the Dabonet we had from actually. Similar colour. Yeah, so here's the unfiltered, delicate small bubbles because it's a bottle conditioned. Not super fizzy because it's obviously been bottled. Quite late during the fermentation. So just give it a little bit of a spritz. Um, nice amber colour, really nice amber colour. Let's give it a sniff. Nice, rich apple. Nice, rich apple. Almost smells a little boozy. I mean, 7.7%, but it almost smells like... <laughs> it reminds me of the... It smells like it's been in a whiskey cask. Just a little bit. It reminds me of the, um, oh, the Kingston Black we had from... Uh, Napton Cidery in the last film. 
Yeah, really rich, deep apple character, aged, autumnal, really kind of great apple smell that. Baked apple, sorted apple, really intense. But over it, it's like a, something that makes me think of whiskey. And there's no whiskey in this room, I promise. Cool. Let's try it. Nice tannins. That apple flavour, that richness comes through on the palate, absolutely. Super fine bubbles, very delicate. Really like that. Um, there is residual sugar in this. It's not fermented to dry. It certainly has not. But I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Um, yeah. Yes. Something about it makes me think of cocktail. Of like a whiskey based cocktail. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't taste like I'm drinking neat whiskey, but any stretch, there's something in there that makes me think of that. Uh, again, like the Napton Cidery one had the same thing, made me think of a cocktail. Um, deep, rich apple flavour in this, intense. There was residual sugar, and it's going to be natural sugar. Um, acidity, yeah, it's got some nice gentle acidity just to balance that, um, that richness a bit. Yeah, you know what? I think the cheese is going to work with this because that's going to have salt. This has got some sugar. And there it is again. Minerality is what I'm getting now. It's almost like a very ripe fruit with like a slightly boozy thing going in the background. It doesn't make me think of whiskey, Scotch whiskey. Just a hint in the background. It's not my imagination. I am getting it. Seriously, I haven't got mental or anything. Shall we try it with some cheese? Yes, Chris. Okay. Yeah, this is an intense bottle of cider. It really is. Um, cool. So, there you go. Look at that. See the where it's just getting soft beneath the rind? So the rind is breaking the cheese down from the outside in. That's where it gets soft at the rind first. So these, these microbes on the outside are sort of breaking down the paste, releasing enzymes um, to break down the proteins and the fats, which gives you a change of the texture, changes the acidity, gives you more flavour compounds and makes it more interesting. In the middle, this slightly more chalky looking bit hasn't happened there yet. So the middle is going to bring a bit more acidity to it. Now, I like that. I like a bit of acidity in the middle. And same way in the side, I want acidity to match sort of the, sh the, the sweetness and the richness. I want acidity to match the richness in the cheese. And the richest bit of the cheese is going to be this bit of the edge where it's broken down. There ends the lesson on that. Let's have a bit. Let's have a bit. Yeah. It has got a funky rind, but it's not super funky. It's like slightly meaty. You tend to get a meaty character. There's a nuttiness off, off this as well. There's a nuttiness. It's like the, the shell of a nut. That's what it makes me think of. Yeah, acidity in the middle. A lovely meaty character at the edge, and I love the rind on this. It's just, mm, it's just it's like the yield is as you bite through it. It just sort of has a, has a bit of bite to it. Your teeth have to work to get through it. It's so thin, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Meaty, nutty, savoury. There's lactic acid in there. There's salt in there. Brilliant mixing of cured meat kind of thing. So it makes making me think of almost like a porky kind of element to it actually. Which gives me high hopes. One more little just one more little bit. Just one more little bit. Seriously guys. Mm -mm -mm. It's really good. I really like it. This is pasteurized. Um you know, I mean my preference tends to be for unpasteurised cheese because there's more potential in the milk that's unpasteurised. There are lots of great pasteurised cheeses out there. This is one of them. Colson Bassett's the one that I always mention because it's one of the best cheeses in the world and it's pasteurised. I'm going to try that with this. Wow. Sorry, one more bit. Yeah, that does. The salt in that does help out with that. The only thing I say is though, that's still quite a rich, fatty cheese. It's caught in my palate. The acidity is great in it. Individually, these are great. Individually, they're great. But I think 
something like the Leicester that I had in the last film, the Red Leicester. Just a bit more minerality, a bit more acidity, etc. Just a bit more flinty. I think would bring a better balance to this. This is a very rich cider. It really is. It really is rich. I mean, it's like drinking alcoholic apple juice, which is kind of what it is. But you know what I mean? Um, and I feel like these are absolutely great together. No problem. They're not clashing. But I feel like the richness of that deserves something a bit more sort of spiky just to balance that richness. That's what I think anyway. However, I love them both. This is good, this special and pack. It is good. It is good. I wonder if it's fully fermented yet. Because it's very low um, sparkle. And it is um, very low sparkle and quite sweet. So I'm wondering if it's still going to keep on fermenting to dry. There's no reason I don't think why it wouldn't. There's, 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 I mean, there's the sediment in here. There's active things in here. So for me, it's possible. It's possible. It'd be interesting to, if I had a couple of bottles and I kept one for a while and see what happened to it. But anyway, Gibbing from Cork, from the Fergusons. Dabinet from Bushel and Peck. Uh, actually, this came direct from Bushel and Peck. I got this from Mons Cheesemongers, as per usual. Like them both, like them both. If you want to grab hold of some, I'm sure you can online if you want. All right, guys, as always, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to sit here in a bedroom, drink and eat, especially drink and eat really nice things. All right, so enough of that. I hope to see you again soon, but until then, cheers. <laughs>